Hello and welcome to Board Game Ninja. Today I would like to bring all you witches and warlocks out for a contest of potion brewing. In Whirling Witchcraft you prepare recipes on your workbench, cook them in your cauldron and then hand the filled cauldron to your neighbor, hoping that their workbench will overflow. Those ingredients are points for you. The first witch with five points is the baddest witch in the woods. Whirling Witchcraft is a contest for two to five players and takes around 30 minutes, even with five players. The box claims that the game is for 14 years and older, but in our experience, a smart kid of nine can play this game and have fun. Every contestant receives a cauldron and a workbench. On the workbench, there is limited space for ingredients. Nine toads, nine spiders, nine mushrooms, four mandrakes and three hearts of shadow. At the top, you find a witch's circle, the space to store your victory points. Each of you gets a personality card. For your first game, it is recommended you use the initiates, recognizable by the star moon. For later games, you deal each player two personalities, of which you must choose one. Make a general supply with all the ingredients. The back of the personality card shows the starting supplies of your witch. Put them on your workbench. Every player also gets an arcana card and three tokens, a cauldron, a raven and a spellbook. Check the front of your personality card for arcana symbols. For every arcana symbol, you move the token up the track. I will tell you more about the arcana symbols during the how to play section of this video. Shuffle the recipe cards and deal every player four cards. Keep them secret from the other witches. These are the recipes you can choose to make every turn. Now you are ready to start playing. Good news for impatient witches. In Whirling Witchcraft you usually play every round simultaneously. You can choose to play around in initiative order, but only when your actions depend on it. Every round starts with a study phase, in which you study the recipes in your hand and decide which one to brew. Everyone places their chosen recipe face down on the table. When all witches have played their cards, they are turned over. Even if you can't brew the recipe now, you have to play one. Let's check out the recipes. These are the ingredients you take out of your workbench to brew the ingredients below the arrow, which you take from the supply. You always have to brew a complete recipe. At the bottom you find the initiative number. This is for when you decide not to play simultaneously in those rare cases when players are waiting to see what others do. If this happens, the player with the lowest initiative goes first. There are also recipes with these direction symbols on them. This means that they can be rotated. You decide how to play them. Once played, they cannot rotate anymore. If you see an ingredient with a dotted line, you may choose what the input or the output will be. At the top of the cards there may be arcana icons. Move the tokens up the track. We will explain these in a bit. Next we go to the brewing phase. Place ingredients from your workbench on the recipe cards to brew a potion. Take the result out of the general supply and fill the recipe. Every turn you can rebrew the recipes you have played in the previous turns. Please note that you can use ingredients that you just produced for other recipes. After everyone has finished brewing, the ingredients on the top half go back to the general supply. The ingredients in the bottom half are placed in your cauldron. Now everyone has a cauldron filled with nice toad legs, mushrooms and a touch of Heart of Shadow, or some other brew. Now the real magic begins. Give your cauldron to the player on your right. When you have received your neighbor's cauldron, you empty the ingredients onto your workbench. Fill the corresponding spaces with ingredients. If they don't fit, your workbench overflows. You have to give the overflowing ingredients back to the player on your left. This witch can place them with a loud cackle in their witch's circle. Only three to go to win this contest. To conclude the round, you pass the recipes in your hand to the player on your left. Then draw cards from the pile until you have four cards again. If no one has won yet, a new round begins. The player to reach five ingredients in their witch's circle wins the game. If there are more players going over five, the one with the most ingredients wins. Finally, we come to the arcana symbols. 
every time one of the tokens reaches or passes an even number, you get to perform the associated action in the study phase. The cauldron lets you take any ingredient from the general supply and put it in your cauldron immediately. The raven lets you discard up to two ingredients from your workbench to the supply. And the spellbook lets you choose one type of ingredient. This round you can take that ingredient from the general supply instead of your workbench when brewing recipes. Whirling Witchcraft is surprisingly fun. The interactivity with other players goes both ways. You pass your cauldron one way and the recipe cards go the other. So you need to determine what the best strategy is to get the cauldron on the right to overflow while making sure that the person on your left doesn't load you with ingredients you cannot use. It's a balancing act, but don't be too cautious. Otherwise you can't brew anything and the bolder witch will win. The game is short and active. A perfect opener for a full game night or as a last game before breaking up. The dif different personalities are almost all offensive, so they give you an edge in certain situations and they seem to speed up the game even further. Expect quick gameplay, overflowing workbenches and players tripping each other up left and right. We hope you will enjoy Whirling Witchcraft as much as we do. Subscribe to the channel if you like this video and we hope to see you again next time. Bye!